clothes and I think there's stuff about artists, models, something, something. All that felt good. Uh, but the bottom line was that um, it doesn't seem to have, uh, you know, uh, where is it going? I mean, uh, okay, it's a pro probably, you know, cutish idea, but um, is there any use to it, okay, in some sense? And so I thought maybe many years later, well, actually not maybe that many years later, I kind of I thought I'll flip the thing backwards and say, okay, you take what you had there and think of it as a control scheme. Because what had we noticed, what we had noticed, which actually was is not there in standard models of uh, SOC, is that as you changed your threshold, your chaotic lattice became uh, you know, got uh, stabilized to different types of regular behavior. So we had noticed it. And there was a uh, there was a region where there was, you know, power law scaling and we were selling that region because we wanted to make contact with uh, self-organized critically. Everyone wanted, so we also wanted. But um, this, we had noticed that, you know, actually if we had sat down and, you know, just looked at it as a, uh, you know, at, at different values, we could get very controlled regular behavior. So now what, instead of using those things, so basically migrate the idea, same idea, but put it in a, in a, in a different uh, uh, kind of um, uh, spin. So you take it and use that as a scheme for control. So now let me in, in, in a very, very briefly say what the scheme is. Though it came from there, it actually migrated all the way to control. So the, it's a very simple scheme. It's like literally one line in your computer program, or as Murali later did, it is a precision clipping circuit, which he could also do very, very easily as it happened. So, so what is it? All it says is, here is your dynamical system. Let it be, let it do its stuff. So all you're saying is that if it exceeds a certain threshold, it's like a Lakshman Rekha, you pull it back, that's all. Okay, so you grab it and you pull it back. And so essentially you, you, are, you do it infrequently because obviously it's doing its own thing, but you're putting a sort of wall in phase space beyond which it cannot wander. So at that point you just, that's all. So you're putting a limit, a sort of your dynamic range is limited and or you can think of it as clipping some portion of your thing. Seems like a pretty innocuous thing to do. And also why should it even work? Okay, but what it did does is it takes chaos and gives all these cycles of different periodicities by setting different thresholds. So what you get is literally as if you had a chaotic temporal sequence which had all kinds of patterns in it and you grabbed different parts of it and you stabilize them. So this snipping of it is actually sort of selecting out a pattern and, and giving you a controlled, stable, regular version of it. And why is chaos even nice? It's nice because it has those temporal patterns. Okay, so if you just had a simple cycle, it could only maybe make a smaller cycle or a fixed point. But chaos has so many different patterns that it could actually be clipped to all kinds of periodicities. So it's a prescriptive kind of thing where you uh, have what you can get out of it is a lookup table. And this engineers like, because you are not calculating much, you've done all the hard work uh, you know, in your, uh, at, at home, and you give them a table which says set threshold X and you get control period Y. And the nice part is because you can get everything, you can give them a long list of thresholds which gives you a long list of different periods. The other nice thing for a chaos person is that these are super stable cycles. Actually, you can prove that they are super stable. And the instant you cross threshold, it gets trapped in a super stable cycle. Not only is it a stable cycle, it's also actually exceedingly uh, robust uh, uh, kind of object that you get. And what you get, I would say, is a flexible pattern generator because you have this little module which is chaotic and you're just sending them these thresholds and it's spitting out these things. Uh, so here was a whole bunch of exact analytical results. So the thing is that for a theoretician, uh, what makes you feel a little happy is you see stuff 
in computations. And then maybe you manage to get exact results uh, which, uh, which sort of you know, agree with what you've seen. And I will absolutely not show the guts of this. That itself is a couple of hours. So I'll just say what one could find and maybe three slides uh, to, to you know, intuitively uh, uh, you know, give the intuitive part of it. So basically one could get the period that, you, that comes out of the chaotic system by different thresholds exactly. Uh, the second actually is a harder uh, question, it's the reverse question. That's the one which an engineer would like, is that what threshold do we need to set in order to get a certain periodicity? That's prescription, like I want this, what do I do? So that question as it turned out is a bit harder question, but both could be done. The second question needs some little bit heavy duty uh, symbolic dynamics, but otherwise it's okay. And what it, the crux of it in three slides I'll say, is that you have this logistic map, which is say a non-linear map, and this Threshold is just sort of giving a cut to the map. And all you need to know is that as you iterate from this threshold, what is the kth iterate where you will exceed threshold again? So you just need to find those solutions. And if you want the reverse question, you will have to use the inverse map. Inverse map usually is, is these are non-invertible maps, so you have to take care of both uh, uh, symbols. And so that's a little more work. That was it. So basically, the other thing which we take for granted in chaos is also used, and that is ergoticity. So basically, your trajectory left to itself will wander everywhere. So if I give it a Lakshman Rekha, it's bound to cross it. So you're guaranteed that at some point it will cross it. You grab it, pull it back, reset it, and there it is trapped in the super stable orbit. Okay? So the kth iterate of the map from that point onwards, once you know when it is above x star, you are... Uh, you have got a cycle. Okay, so uh, for instance, a behead, this is a famous logistic map, which was the one I gave before, 4x1 minus x. Okay, so it has a quadratic uh, uh, non-linearity. It was the first picture which I had. As I said, I would use it uh, later. And uh, as you can see, that this is it's this beheaded map, uh, tabletop map, or whatever, some such plateau or whatever, and a flat portion is what you want because there f prime is zero and which would mean that is what comes in the linear stability analysis so once it's zero it is the most stable it can ever be it's a super stable orbit and so by design you actually get all these super stable orbits and as you change your threshold you may not get your first fixed point but here you get the second one period two here you get period four so in short you can do this entire machinery exactly um, uh, by, by working forward from the iterates of the map and seeing what is the solution uh, that uh, where this inequality holds and you just you have to just be a bit careful it's a bit grungy but it's very doable okay and you get a certain uh, a function which is uh, the period um, which is defined very precisely here uh, and it's of course a piecewise continuous function of the threshold but the good news for people who want to implement is that these windows are nice and fairly big so you can actually sit in them in a reasonable experimental setup and get answers which is what of course uh, later on in 2003 10 years after that, uh, I had the good fortune of uh, you know, having Murali over and he has all these circuits and uh, he can do stuff which I can't do, so I got him. And uh, I know some of you have seen this today at, at 11 o'clock, but I thought by 5 o'clock you would have forgotten half the pictures he's shown, so I will reshow a few of them. And so anyway, this was there. Um, but the good part is that there was exact agreement with 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 a small scaling, you know, from his whatever he had in volts and what I had in the numerics. But exactly that lookup table is what was mirrored in it. And what is even nicer is that you know his setup is uh, in his teaching lab as a, or or was uh, you know it's 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 a uh, it's not uh, you know it's it's a standard bit of equipment. But after that, people have also worked on it. And uh, for instance, Morai's group in, in Japan now have this uh, CMOS uh, integrated circuit implementation of 126 maps doing exactly as we did in, the, in that 
analytical treatment. So, I mean, there are sometimes you feel, I mean, it has no business being this good, but it sort of works. Uh, so, that is it. Yeah. So, um, then I thought two minutes I will extend it to a few pictures, which some of you have seen today already. So, maps are one way of looking at dynamical systems in discrete time, but of course, we more. Um, commonly use ordinary differential or differential equations. And uh, so we tried it out on differential equations. I confess that here there are no exact results. I tried pretty hard, uh, but uh, I don't know. I have no ideas on it. However, the numerics is pretty extensive, and as is uh, the experiments done by Murali and other people uh, you know, in other parts of the world. So here is a set of uh, ordinary differential equations. And as you put these walls in, uh, in phase space, the, the first one is this you know, band, which looks uh, is, is a chaotic one scroll attractor. It's sort of you know, all uh, complicated looking. You put this thing, it starts neatly becoming cycles of different uh, periodicities. Here's one, two, four. Okay, and you can do it with double scroll. You can go from this butterfly looking. Um, these are all oscilloscope pictures, so as real as it gets. And so here is a, a double scroll attractor, which you have controlled into all these, uh, uh, you know, regular dynamics, including a fixed point. Okay, this is probably burning a hole in your oscilloscope, but okay, uh, it's sitting there. We even did it for hyperchaotic systems because what was the feeling that okay we can't uh, do this exactly, but suppose there is a hyperchaotic system. So these are systems which have more than one positive Lyapunov exponent. So uh, to strip it off the uh, jargon, it means that it has more than one unstable directions. Okay, so uh, now the feeling is that it has more than one. So that say this one has a four-dimensional uh, uh, object with two expanding uh, directions. So you feel you might need to put thresholding on more than one variable. You know, in one, you may not just cut it, right? Because, you know, there are two expanding directions. Uh, but then you try one. If it works, you, you know, uh, uh, you know are, you're happy. But you're also a bit, you know, you wonder what's going on. So this was the hyperchaotic attractor. And this was the controlled orbit with one variable, which was uh, thresholded. I honestly don't know why it works this well, but it does. So basically, this kind of putting a wall in phase space, even along a line, uh, seems to be a, a very effective way of uh, grabbing and controlling the rest of the dynamics. Okay. Uh, so uh, in the next uh, maybe 10 minutes, I thought I'll just tell you. Um, so we are trying to do something more with it at this point. You know, I mean, if you want to use chaos, I mean, you can't say it's good for screen savers. I mean, it's a fine thing, but you have to do, you know, you might want to do something a little more serious. So uh, one of the things we thought was, can we use this pattern generator that you have to do computational tasks, but you want to, you want to get something extra out of it. And the extra part is that you want one module with the minimum tweaks or parsimoniously to give you flexibility. So of course, if we do lots of things and lots of things happen again, uh, it's fine and nice, but you want to do the, you know, a very small tweak to it so that it behaves in different ways. Different avatars come by very minor tweak. And so this is chaos for computation. You can think of your hardware as these threshold activated uh, chaotic elements. And the programming part is just that here is an input output relation which you want satisfied. Okay, uh, that is it. And the aim, of course, is that you should have some ability to switch. And the hope is that this will give you a more dynamic architecture. Okay, that you have at hand like a raw material which could uh, switch on the fly to be what you need it to be. Uh, so what does a theoretician need to do here? He has to set up the truth tables which you need to satisfy. You have to have a sensible way of having inputs and output. So the easiest one was to say inputs are something which you just add to the state of the system. Output, we said, was 1 if it was higher than threshold, 0 if it was lower than threshold. Very simple. But now we have to get this whole truth table to work. And to do that, suppose I went back to the, say, logistic map, for instance, or any F, actually. I have to basically solve this set of equations. So this is the task which is given for a 
in the designing part. These are necessary and sufficient conditions. Okay, you have to simultaneously solve them. And of course, you have to hope that a solution exists. That is not a given. Okay, you have to get this. And what we sort of found was that robust solutions existed only when the system is sufficiently nonlinear. So nonlinearity is is needed and is something which you uh, um, is actually the work engine okay so it's um, it, it's it, that's what it's doing it because in some sense if you think of it you have these different functions which it's trying to satisfy obviously a straight line somewhere is not going to cut it you have to have you know some some richness in your functional form to begin with in order to uh, uh, to get all those uh, different equations to be satisfied and so uh, in one may say that the dynamics had that richness and of course it's deterministic so you're not relying on probability or something you did it you will get the answer in the next step so that is a prescriptive thing it's it's like a box uh, it's like a formula uh, to to take your state forward okay uh, so uh, this thing seems so simple but it uh, kept developing in in all kinds of ways and then there was this uh, company uh, which was uh, developing the uh, oh that should be vlsi sorry how how could I have this typo forever? Anyway, uh, implementation uh, of this, and uh, they probably have many generations now, um, but uh, this was one uh, which was given to us. Uh, I think they have been bought up by ARM in uh, Cambridge, uh, so, uh, uh, but okay. So people are trying to develop it, but the thing is, I don't even recognize the idea sometimes. It's got a little bit far uh, from from the way I understand it. However, I've been told that at the heart of it, it is that still the same old kind of concept which we had put forward. Okay, so the last um, 20 minutes, uh, I thought I would um, address yet another thing because I had promised chaos and noise. And so this is the noise bit. So noise and nonlinearity. So where does this motivation come from? I don't have to motivate it much. Uh, of course, everybody has been talking about it. So as these devices uh, and platforms are shrinking in size, uh, you are increasingly going to encounter fundamental noise characteristics. So these cannot be suppressed. They cannot be eliminated. You can't just wish them away. I mean, you have to confront them in some fashion. So this was the feeling. So is there some way, again, in the same thread, you know, trying to get uh, something to work for you, it, just like we tried to get chaos to work for us, is there some way we can actually use noise to our advantage? Is there some, you know, scheme you can think of where the noise would work for us? That's the idea. Now, the cooperative behavior between noise and dynamics is actually known, and so there was hope, and um, and often it was known that the, the you know pretty counterintuitive physical phenomena came from this interaction. For instance, stochastic resonance was one of those things, uh, where if you give a appropriate amount of noise, it could boost signal. Okay, so it facilitates detection in a noisy environment. So you put a little bit of it, and and engineers know it, uh, knew it for a long time. Uh, but you know, in in physics, of course, if we uh, we put a different uh, framework to it, uh, but uh, you know uh, it's 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 a uh, it's uh, pretty well understood. So uh, essentially, your SNR, your signal to noise ratio, is maximized in the presence of non-zero noise. So that was the counterintuitive part. Okay, so uh, you know if any any in fact you can have other measures of information transfer, but the usual one says SNR. So these are maximized somewhere in the middle. Okay, and a uh, lot of people have put a spin on a lot of phenomena uh, to say that stochastic resonance is somehow underlying it. So what what did we do? So uh, this was so Murali is also here. We uh, we were in it together very much. Um, so what? So here the search is that can we have so reliable or more reliable logic circuit elements in the presence of a noise floor, which somehow is exploiting this interaction between the nonlinearity and the noise to do better. Okay, so we are trying to understand the cooperative behavior. So there is a device noise flow, can't wish it away. It is what it is. It's the nonlinearity which we can tweak and somehow can we get them to work uh, in a way 
so that uh, uh, in some optimal band of noise we get the most consistent logical combination of the input signals okay and uh, well for better or worse we called it logical stochastic resonance and now it appears to be a standalone term if you google it it pops up everywhere uh, you know you sometimes wish you'd call something somewhat better but this is what we had called it and it stuck okay uh, so i'll just run through the simplest one first and then the others would be just pictures so take a nonlinear dynamical system x dot is some f of x plus i which is your low amplitude input signal sub threshold somebody had asked in fact uh, and there is some strength of noise and say you can take a zero mean gaussian noise with variance one as you wish now uh, this f of x is a nonlinear function which gives rise to distinct energy wells okay so that is its thing and you drive it with two inputs say you are looking for a two input gate so i1 i2 now remember every time you have these two independent input signals they can add in any old way because the world gives you inputs you don't have a choice in the matter so they give you a three level a periodic waveform so far everyone in stochastic res or not everyone a good many were trying to look at a uh, response to signals which were periodic so we, we can't do that don't want to do that we are looking at a periodic signals so for instance here's a simple one which has these two wells okay it's bistable and say one is around minus 1 one, one is around plus 1 i call one lower well one upper well now the output of the system is determined by its state whatever state it's in so if it's in the upper well you can call it one if it's in the lower well you can call it zero so this is a schematic here is your box your nonlinear system box inputs input bits given by the world i1 i2 they are a random stream and noise which is there which you live with and together they conspire to give you either you know something which goes up or down and that should be the logic output corresponding absolutely perfectly with inputs if you have done your job correctly okay so that's what you want so here is a picture and in fact even if the other pictures don't make sense you can carry this one back so here are three panels with three different noise the first one is lowish noise forget the scale here it's a bit strange the middle one is moderate noise and the last one is high noise high noise well all bets are off i mean it's pretty useless right it's you know you think of two wells it has a lot of noise it's just going back and forth any any which way it wants so that is pretty useless for an output it has no reliability at all the strange thing is if the noise is small it's also not reliable why it's not going back and forth but it's getting stuck so it might get stuck in the lower well and somehow these threshold, these inputs are not enough to drag it to the right well so too little noise is also not working for you because of its getting stuck in the wrong place too much noise it goes back and forth randomly pretty pretty much in its own whatever way it chooses the middle one on the other hand absolutely perfectly mirrors the logic output that you want so the bottom line here is that only in an optimal window of noise which happened to be pretty broad actually uh, you have this very very uh, perfect uh, uh, kind of uh, logic output and uh, very consistent and later on of course uh, uh, various proof of principle circuit experiments were also done and raja mohammed is also probably here somewhere who 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 did some of that now <clears throat> to push this a little further uh, you know this part it was nice we thought we'll give a little asymmetrizing bias so we put a little constant voltage very easy to do in in real life just put put in you know a a a, a small uh, c a constant bias and what would it do it would swing the wells ever so slightly on one side which would bias the the output in a way so that we can match different logic that was the that was the logic so it, you want to not only get noise assistant gates you also want to get uh, morphing gates from it and so here it is uh, <clears throat> uh, the probability so here is uh, bias here is noise this nice bright spot is the sweet spot where you know it's 
probability one of getting it. So we run it through a million random inputs. We see the output, see how well it matches. When it matches with probability one, we are happy because it says we are good to go and you know we are very confident of the output. And so this bright little spot here is the, is the nice spot which we aim for. Okay. And this side is Nord, the other one is NAND, I think. Um, and what it means is, as you want to get a good NAND, you put your bias in one place. You want to get a good NOR, you put your bias in another place. And you can switch from one to another because C is very, very easy, right, to tweak. So the next few things are just pictures. One was a nanomechanical oscillator, uh, which actually operates in a nonlinear regime with two different vibrational states. Anytime there are two states coexistent, we are in business. Okay, so uh, Mohanty's group had this in Boston University, and uh, so uh, pretty quickly we could take what he had. Uh, and do a noise assisted reprogrammable nanomechanical logic gate. So this is a single crystal uh, uh, silicon and uh, you know with some uh, uh, you know this was a schematic of what he had and uh, pretty small uh, very good power consumption also in nanowatts and uh, uh, quite uh, nifty. And this is the experimental data again Small noise, not, not great. Uh, large noise, of course, not great. And in this middle band, pretty perfect. Then we kind of, you know, once you get it, some of it is, you know, you try this, that, and the other. And you would be surprised at the number of uh, interesting systems that have double wells. You know, so if you have one in the audience, I'd love to try it uh, on your system. So, uh, uh, so here, here is one more example. Uh, uh, I'm just picking up one or two. Uh, so this one was, I, I like this example partly because I really like the cover they made for EPL. These are null clients actually, and uh, you know they uh, they intersect at four places. These are the four fixed points where the null clients enter, and this was the system which uh, where the the artist made such a beautiful one, I thought it looked like, I don't know, Montreal. Uh, huh? I never thought of that. Maybe I could sell this thing for more ways than one. <laughs> yeah, not a bad idea. True. Huh. Okay, I got a new idea today. Huh? Uh, so, right. Anyway, so here, uh, well, uh, we worked on many things. It, bottom line, it works for that system. But, uh, you know, everything has to do something extra, right? Otherwise, you're sort of just checking it for this and that. So what it did here was, he could, we could do, because we had four wells. Now you have, first we had two wells. We could do stuff. We have four wells. We should be able to do more stuff. So uh, what we did was, we, took, we managed to get from the four wells by navigating, you know, along the null clients, two complementary gate operations okay so what we got from two wells was one so from four wells thing you you needed a little bit of uh, care because you have to uh, guide it to the right well uh, but um, it was uh, doable and fun uh, and this was a analog uh, circuit of it uh, done with ed helen and um, just uh, according to them See, I wouldn't know because I don't, I can't do it anyway. It's all hard for me. But they said this was a little harder to to implement. Uh, but at the end, they got it. Moderate noise, wonderful switching, and low noise was stuck here or there because this is a kind of analog of of the work in the uh, with the Kazu and Ando. So there are lots of uh, blobs uh, here and there, uh, and the only reason I show it is some of them do a much better job of uh, jazzing up what I'm saying uh, than than I can do, and uh, because you know we we need to uh, you know stick to the script and all more than the journalists. Uh, however, I thought both of these did a fairly uh, uh, rigorous job. They didn't say anything which was wrong, at least. Okay, I know that's a very weak statement, but it's true. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so there is a lot of work from other groups, and I thought I put these not because I understand them. I actually sometimes don't even understand what people are doing, though they call it LSR. Um, so some people do uh, 
theory, like they have been looking at uh, other information based measures, uh, trying to uh, decrease bit rate uh, error rates uh, by using other more wells, for instance, time delay, colored noise. Uh, they've done it in different uh, uh, systems, physical systems, you know, uh, including uh, laser systems and micro mechanical systems and thin films. I really don't know how that one worked, but I saw it, so I put it. So, uh, I, in the last uh, 10 minutes, uh, 10 minutes, right, uh, I thought I'll just give a couple of, uh, you know, uh, directions. I mean, I said other people are doing it. We also did some more work on it. One I thought I'd put because uh, Manoj is here and Puneet uh, also is here. And um, so, uh, this was um, something where we used couple systems and synchronization in order to uh, uh, to get all the different gates. So basically you can tweak this whole idea, not just with one system, but you can other get other features. Like for instance, maybe how much they synchronize and that could itself be your output. Anyway, so so uh, this uh, particular panel was also obtained by, by Manoj by uh, in a nice automated way uh, in uh, uh, real experiments. You know, usually the other ones I've shown was numerical, but this one was uh, also obtained um, by uh, sweeping parameters uh, very efficiently. And so that's one of them. Uh, the other thing was uh, uh, Murali talked about in the morning. Uh, so I'll just put one uh, slide on it. And this is a, a recent uh, physical review applied this year. And the idea here is, uh, so somehow it c connects the first half and the second half. So you have two wells, you have noise. So you have noise assist. So you are assisting with, you know, noise is aiding you. However, uh, you also want to do all possible gates. Now that is a bit harder with a bistable thing, just a plain thing. So the idea was you have a nonlinear transformation on the input signal and your bistable system is almost like, you know, a threshold detector. So, so it's a mix of logical stochastic resonance and the flexibility which you get from nonlinear transformations. And again, of course, this function has to be sufficiently nonlinear. And we found that a quartic polynomial actually yielded the full spectrum of uh, logic functions. So again, uh, nonlinearity to the rescue and sufficiently nonlinear is, is necessary in order to do the full job. Last few minutes. I just thought I'd put this because it connects to an idea which is not part of this theme but um, is going around uh, these days and uh, uh, and it's called tipping. So um, here we were saying that there is a fixed point, there's a fixed point, okay you uh, go from one to another, there may be noisy fixed points. But what if we had a complex attractor here and a complex attractor there, so different parts of phase space have complex attractors. And actually, you're hopping between complex attractors like a logic operation. Okay, so this is a generalized logic, uh, uh, logical stochastic resonance because you are not no longer dealing with simple fixed point attractors, but could be chaotic attractors sitting in in very different parts, so that you can hop between them. And the way you hop should mirror your truth table. Okay, so you switch uh, between these uh, different attractors. And so for instance, here is one. So one attractor is sitting here, one attractor is sitting here. And as your trajectory transits from, uh, you know, transfers from here to here, toggles or switches, you can get the appropriate outputs. Okay. And what happens here is, if you notice that these two things actually, if you tweak the parameters can come perilously close. So actually you can have these attractors very, very close in your basin. So what does that mean? It means it takes very little to switch to the other attractor. So you can get a huge output, uh, hugely different outcomes by a minor sort of push. So what happened was the input signal, which was, you know, order of 10 to the power minus three, very small compared to the attractor size which is of the order of 1, so your output is order of 1, your input is 10 to the power minus 3, very small change, but the dynamical outcome is huge. And in fact, um, 
this part I don't know how that happened, we have to figure it out a bit, is that the input, but this is what happened in Murali's lab, so you know, we believe experiments still. Um, so in the proof of principle experiment, uh, the input signal was actually sometimes, you know, he kept pushing it down, 100 times smaller than the experimental noise which was, uh, you know, in about one volt. So it is as if this very low amplitude input <clears throat> is giving this very highly amplified noise because we are utilizing that tipping point. So somehow people talk about tipping points as a very, you know, uh, uh, is something to be avoided because it gives you this, you know, you're pushed over the edge. There's this, you know, bugs bunny kind of, uh, somebody comes and pushes someone and you go screaming down the cliff kind of feeling. And it's true. But the thing is that you're using that enormous uh, outcome, difference in outcome to do, to work for you. That's the idea. Okay. So this presumably, oh, this is my last thing. So I, I always manage to speak fast enough to finish on time. Okay. So, uh, this is a summarizing uh, slide. Um, so what was the central idea? Uh, we tried to exploit uh, chaos in the first bit, first half, and in the second half, uh, noise and nonlinearity. And um, we were trying to get this. Of course, part of it is because we are theorists, we will just like to see what happens. But we wanted to take the, let's see what happens a little further and uh, do something a little presumably, uh, you know, of use, uh, and that is design a computing device, uh, which is a little different from the way it is done uh, at this point. And um, uh, at the end of the day, what we are really grabbing is the power of the nonlinear transformation. Because either you're doing it, the dynamics them, it on its own is doing it because it's a nonlinear uh, uh, evolution. So it is g gifting a nonlinear transformation to it. Or if you want to engineer it, of course, you can do it in, in as was done in the uh, physical review uh, applied paper uh, by engineered uh, thing in the inputs. But nonlinear transformation is key. And the last thing was to somehow constructively use the jitters of noise uh, in order to do better, at least in a, uh, in a wide-ish optimal window of noise and which is uh, right now dubbed uh, logical stochastic resonance. Okay, so I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, please. Sir. Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, Ma'am, uh, currently uh, uh, logical gates are implemented using transistors, uh, right? And uh, so how is this scheme different from that and uh, ha has this the possibility of introducing some new models of building like useful computers uh, for you know, this whole thing? Yeah, so that's that's of course what the company is trying to uh, commercialize, right? I mean, to 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 uh, pack it into you know uh, smaller uh, size and with lower the power, of course, uh, uh, to an acceptable limit. So, um, so the the way I would put it is that the the only extra idea is that when you build something with a family of of or something, so you maybe build it with a family of NAND gates or a family of RAND. So you have a very static kind of art because you have one sort of logic, you can cascade it and you can, you know, concatenate and get all the others. But you have to use, you know, like you would learn in your electrons to put, put various things uh, together. So, uh, but here what you're saying is something different. It's more like you're uh, having a programmable or reprogrammable kind of thing where uh, almost like you are giving it the message to be what logical functionality it, it wants to be. So you can optimize, for instance, maybe for a task, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, what you have, or you could even think that, you know, uh, as you, as your tasks uh, change, you might, uh, you know, go on to, uh, so you are sort of molding your hardware to uh, your uh, 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 to the thing. So of course, uh, as I said, the, the part which is the commercialization part is, I don't even understand it, though of course it works off our patents and stuff, uh, but um, I don't understand it because huge amount of other elements are there. For instance, whether the foundry can make it, whether, you know, those are not things which we have factored in, but 
they are the ones that those business plan people have. But clearly, it's getting sold somewhere, mostly to do some sort of, uh, I think, security-based thing. So, so ma'am, you can turn, uh, let's say, NAND gate into NOR gate by yeah, some, doing yeah, simple. Yeah, 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 right. Uh, I mean, proof of principle, of course. I mean, all of them have uh, done, uh, uh, lots of people, I mean, not just us, other people in other groups have done it. Uh, uh, and uh, so that is... That's of course, yeah, yeah, without any issues, yeah. You can morph uh, b across uh, many logic functions, yeah. That is not a problem, yeah. Uh, in proof of principle thing, yeah. Mm. And, and for example, in neuroscience, we have nonlinear model of the, like, uh, the system. So, like, uh, can you, like, uh, can such gates exist there, like, uh, yeah. for logical function? Yeah. So that's the kind of thing, of course, she, uh, she, uh, I mean, uh, other people like Sheeta Branal. So their thing is, of course, uh, I, I don't know, maybe I'm putting words there. So there is another way of looking at computation, is that this is nature, maybe it is doing something. It is sort of effectively doing a computation. Uh, uh, that is not what I am doing actually. So I am saying nature is this way. I am using what I understood of that to exploit it. So if I don't understand what is doing, of course I can't control. It. You know, understanding comes before control. You know what you are con controlling. So I am using the understanding then to do something prescriptive and controlled and giving the engineers like do this. The other way of looking at computation is to say that. Uh, like literally you can say that after all, uh, suppose I had a fluid something, it's, it's solving its own partial differential equation, suppose I say that. So it is, it's like an analog version of its, you know, of the problem, I mean, in some ways. So that is another way of looking at things, you know, uh, what is it effectively uh, doing. Um, so I'm sure it is doing uh, things, but uh, in my head, actually, uh, bio-inspired is fine. But bio has so much redundancy, it does things so differently that uh, I don't know, uh, you know, uh, uh, whether all of it uh, goes across uh, as easily uh, to the, I'm, I'm sure it's, it's doing so many things, I mean, uh, and it has to be nonlinear, that is for sure, I can, that I'm putting my, <laughs> you know, on the line to say that, but uh, other than, uh, yeah, so, uh, but to use it is a, uh, that's another step actually where you have to understand everything completely exactly how. Huh? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so sort of continuing the same question, um, uh, well, uh, sticking to the understanding part first, hmm. uh, uh, let's say uh, starting from the usage part itself, hmm. uh, why do you have to uh, uh, switch from one gate to other gate to other gate? Uh, I mean, in a uh, when your uh, ultimate aim is to build a useful computer, I, I think nowadays the way it is done is you have universal gates and like NAND gate and from oh, that you will other gates. That's of course the so, way, I mean, most of it, but but there are these field, pro I mean, you can, you have programmable gates also, right? I mean, uh, okay. right. Uh, so, except that most of the time, if you want to have program, you switch the connections and you keep the functionality of the modules thing. Here you're saying, you're freeing your mind of what, what most engineers do. You're saying, you change the functionality also. See, because after all, suppose you want to do a, a, a some, some, uh, you would have to concatenate or you have to do some, some, you have to cascade a set of things, right, to get some other function. But yes, I mean, that is how most people do it, uh, but uh, you can, uh, you know, uh, so the idea is to go uh, and get a more uh, flexible, more dynamic architecture. Okay, I get it. Uh, it gives some sort of uh, flexibility. Right. Uh, uh, so, uh, going back to the uh, understanding part, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the framework of uh, uh, the paradigm of universal uh, gates like NAND gate mm -hmm. or NAND logic, mm -hmm. uh, I think is uh, uh, pretty much restricted to uh, the arena of Boolean logic. Right. right. Uh, so, uh, when you are trying to understand, let's say, biological system or uh, some nonlinear phenomena mm -hmm. in general, mm -hmm. uh, why do you have to restrict? to boolean logic yeah. or uh, is for example is there something like uh, fuzzy logical stochastic resonance right, right. that people have already talked about or you flashed at some point uh, uh, some number of gates right uh, uh, oh. can you uh, also come up with uh, yeah. i mean uh, right, it should exactly. be possible to come up with yes. 
uh, nonlinear uh, oscillators which model some non-standard fuzzy logical circuit, uh, truth table, let's say. Absolutely. Uh, uh, I mean, so uh, are people doing such things already or uh, it's still... I mean, there are, I mean, that is actually probably a little bit maybe uh, easier in some sense to do because, you know, you have the variables and it's, you know, it's out there uh, and some of it could even be, as I was saying, interpretation because, you know, it has already, you know, it's naturally doing something. You can interpret it as uh, some sort of a, a computation that there has been uh, efforts on that uh, so uh, I have not uh, done it here uh, so uh, so I will I can't speak for uh, other people's uh, you know uh, efforts on the matter but indeed it's a it's it's absolutely uh, possible and uh, uh, there are other ways of of, of uh, uh, approaching it uh, so this is mine <laughs> yeah but to say something I, even i don't believe the brain works with boolean logic that's for sure i mean this i don't think it does but it does some sort of effective computation which you have to figure out what it does is a is a different ball game i think yeah um, so i don't for, understand her yeah uh, uh, so for a k input boolean function you have uh, two power two power k possible logic rules hmm. so i was just curious whether uh, you Gone would have, her. you know, you would have so many yeah. parameter ranges yeah, to capture all of these. Yeah. Uh, Yes, yes. Actually, but that uh, already uh, we have gone quite uh, far. I mean, uh, we have. Uh, I didn't show all that. I mean, they're usually some of them are in. Uh, so that we have already uh, pushed uh, uh, up to. Uh, oh, so think, all four, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. yeah we have already done that. It's not. It's actually not so hard. It's. It comes out pretty neatly. Yeah. Uh, yes, that part we have checked already. Huh? Oh, and, yeah. But I mean, the size. It is harder. Is obviously, <laughs> it is harder. You have to work work harder but uh, the, the same thing goes through without uh, any issues so it's there uh, which which was our paper I forget now one of them uh, 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 yeah because I think Murali has done it in his own uh, lab uh, so yeah so that is not uh, in principle not not so much of, of an issue so far okay. yeah yeah at some point of course you will hit the <laughs> some some sort of uh, limit in complexity yeah, Kind of, uh, stuff. You can also do things with multi value logic, even uh, the fuzzy logic, also you can uh, do. The thing is that uh, how we are going to map the inputs, and the, then we are going to fix the performance of the system, then whether we are going to get that meaningful output or not. So, at the end of the day, we need to have one to one correspondence between the input to the intended output. That's it. But it, it can be done. And we have also yeah, so multi-value multi internal no, also no issues. That. that that is all very simple. It's uh, already there. So, and also we have done for multi-inputs uh, case also. Yeah. So that we can do no other complicated uh, Boolean functions apart from standard logic gates kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah so all that part, th those are uh, uh, not uh, not an issue. Yeah. Other questions. You mentioned that uh, the noise can help to improve the signal to noise ratio in some nonlinear problems. But is it, uh, have you uh, seen it for uh, semi classical systems or beyond classical regime? Because in many quantum problems, there are these sign problems where the signal to noise ratio is exponentially suppressed. So, whether mm. these can be exploited in quantum mechanical problems? Yeah, you mean to say a quantum version of uh, stochastic re resonance? Uh, uh, yeah, I, I, say, I don't know. I've sort of, uh, huh? I mean, yeah, right, there is uh, stuff, but I don't know how, um, uh, I mean, restrictive it is because they do it for something. See, the, the classical version is, is actually the number of examples is so huge and it's, uh, you know, it's very easy to understand. So. I don't know if it is so extensively done for quantum. They, I think they're probably. I've seen one or two papers, but yeah, and uh, so it is not as as uh, as as clear. Yeah, so that would of course there would be the issue of tunneling, and then uh, yeah. Uh, so I don't know how how meaningfully to to uh, to formulate it in this way. I mean, in some sense, I I agree. So at at one point. Uh, it's something which I gave off at, at some point because I mean I was a 
uh, you know, more uh, quantum semi-classical sort of person myself. But that uh, connection which you, you know, H cross going to zero is a hairy limit. Everyone knows. So it really messes up things. So it is sometimes very difficult to take concepts uh, across uh, even though the system might not be so big. Uh, what I find interesting though in this classical way of looking at it is that some of the, uh, uh, some of the experiments they are really small, they are in the nanoscale and uh, you know uh, yet the effective uh, description is if you strip it of everything you know it, you can uh, actually describe what is happening with a nice uh, small classical equation and once you have that model which is pakka one can uh, go forward without uh, issues but in the absence of that I, I don't know I don't know how to uh, proceed uh, honest answer <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Okay, so if there are no further questions, let's thank uh, Professor Shideshna Sinha for a wonderful talk. <laughs>